I'm Rabbi Jay Carson. And I'm Rabbi Need Ruby Ray Carson. And, and tape, tape with Rabbi, Rabbi Doug is next. next. Gonna watch Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. Forget about the network programs. Forget about all the great cable shows. There's only one thing for me on Mondays and Tuesday nights. Rabbi Doug! We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna watch Rabbi Doug. Yeah, we're gonna watch Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. We are here today to hear Rabbi Yonah Metzger. He is the Ashkenazic Chief Rabbi of Israel. He is here for his first visit in Chicago. Most of his visit has been over Shabbat, over the Sabbath, so we weren't able to be with him there. But he is giving a speech today to the Jewish community, and we are going to listen to him. Uh, and it is most interesting. He's an amazing speaker, so stay with us here for Rabbi Yonah Metzger, the Ashkenazic Chief Rabbi of Israel, on Taped with Rabbi Doug. I have to say that uh, I'm very happy that I came to visit uh, Chicago. <laughs> I said today that it's small Shekhiyama because uh, I found a very special community. Uh, I'm to tell you uh, the second time the small story that Rabbi mentioned before that I, I am the first uh, chief rabbi that was born in Eretz Israel. I had a convention in London some years ago, a convention of rabbis, and one of the rabbis, after the lesson, stood up and asked me a question. Dear Chief Rabbi, I have a question to ask you which blessing I have to bless if I see the first time in my life a chief rabbi of Israel. <laughs> so in the beginning I didn't know how to answer. And then I said to him, you know what, because I'm the first chief rabbi that was born in Eretz Israel, please say the following blessing. Baruch Ato Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Boere Pri HaAdomo. Allow me to share with you an idea that I thought about uh, Abraham Avinu. That he was very old, 90 years old. He sat in his tent and Hashem asked him, please go outside from your tent. Abed Nahashamayma was followed a Kohavi. Look at the sky and count the stars. Can you? So, so koi yezadecha. Like the stars, so many will be your uh, children, your nation. Am Yisrael. The question is, first of all, how many Jews we are in the world? Some buildings in China. 30 million. One of the mayors in China came to visit Jerusalem. He came to visit me also. And he asked me how many Jews are in, uh, in, in Israel and then how many Jews are in all over the world. I said 30 million. 30 million? You know 30 million is a number that if we have a mistake about counting people in our city, we the mayor said 15 million. So what did you say? This is a promise of Abraham Avinu that the Am Israel will be like the stars. You can, if it was for Chinese, I understand. But where we are? We are, as we call our ministry in the Torah. The Torah itself said that we will be few. So how can it be that the, the promise and the blessing that Abraham Avinu got that you children will be so many? Like the stars. The second question, who doesn't know that we cannot be able to count the stars? You have to ask such an old person like Abraham Avinu to go with his shtetl 
outside from the tent to look up to the sky, count. Can you? No. One, two, three, no, I cannot, I cannot do it. It's necessary to go outside? Hashem cannot explain him inside the tent? Let's see a chutzah. Abedna Hashemayma, go outside and swallow the Kohavim, count the stars. Herod Kinnam, the child of the king, kindergarten knows that you cannot count the stars. The third question is, two psuki, two sentences later, is written about Blith Ben Abtali. And there is written, Vayi Hashem Eshlavo, that the sun sat down. It's a sign that when Hashem spoke with Abraham Avinu, the sun rises. So it is a is a So it was during the day. So how can you find stars during the day? What happened here? Let's go outside to count the stars during the day. Very strange. So allow me to share with you a, a small idea. I think that the blessing that Abraham Avinu got for Am Yisrael was not about quantity, only about quality. And the quality would be so good, so high level, that all over the world you will be, people will think that we are so many in the world. I came once for two days to give shiurim for an ekoilel in Rome. And uh, one night I ate dinner by the president of the Jewish community. And I asked him, as everyone, every Israeli asked the same question, how many Jews are in Italy? So he said, it's a secret. <laughs> what do you mean? If the rabbi will not t speak about it here in Italy, I allow myself to tell you the truth. What do you mean? Really, we are only 20, maybe all, all the Italy, we are more than 50 million citizens. Jews are 26, 27 thousand people. But please go outside and ask the citizens how many Jews are <laughs> You will understand why I'm saying it's a secret. <laughs> so we finish the dinner and he invited a taxi driver and uh, he took me to, to my host where I, 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 I came to, to sleep at night. During the way, I was lucky that the, this driver knew English because it's not usual in Italy that someone speaks English. And I asked him, how many Jews are in Italy? He said, oh, what do you know? 50 percent. 50 percent? Yeah, between 25 to 30 million. I was shocked, but then I thought, can be that the president of the Jewish community has opened me in it and said before, preparing. So, and I checked it uh, myself. Uh, I asked more or less 10 people, Gentiles. It goes between 20 million to 30 million Jews in Italy. <laughs> the previous chief rabbi of Rome, Baruch Hashem, he has a Rishos Yomi, and he is more than, I think, 96 years old, Rabbi Toaf. <coughs> that, by the way, only one name the previous pope mentioning his will. One name, Rabbi Tov. So, uh, he told the following story. That one day, 
the president of Italy called him, please speak about me because I am a candidate to be the next time the president of Italy and the elections will be in three months. So do me a favor, speak with the Jews. He said, excuse me, I refuse. What happened? I'm good with Israel. I'm good with the Jews. You didn't hear from me something against Jews. What happened? Why you refused? You see? He said, Allah decrees we have a law. In the same day, it will be Rosh Hashanah. And I cannot allow myself to ask my people to go to the elections to vote for you because it's the first day, the only day for us. I cannot do it. You know what he did? He came to the parliament, he changed the law about the date of the elections that the millions of the Jews will come to vote for him. Do you use 
the laptop? He will say, sure. A modern guy, of course, I use the laptop. You have to know that in every laptop, the brain of the laptop made in Israel. The Yiddish cop. It's a blessing that Hashem gave to Abraham, the quality. And this was the sign, this was the sign that uh, Hashem asked Abraham Avin, please go outside from the tent. And Abraham Avin went out during the day. So what happened to the stars during the, the day? Did Hashem destroy them? No. But there is one big star, the sun. When the she is shining, she covers the quality of one star, cover all the billions of stars in the world. So you can see the quality from one star, the sun, against billions of stars. This was a blessing. Look during the day what happens. How the quality can win against so many quantities. And therefore, Baruch Hashem, we are blessed. That uh, I have to tell you, I, sometimes I, I cannot understand. I'm, I'm, I don't live between Gentiles. Here, also, you live between intelligent people. I was some weeks ago in Guatemala. Guatemala is a little bit dangerous huh? <laughs> because the drugs and the criminals, but the, the ambassador gave me his uh, car, special car against shooting and this, and bodyguards around the publishing. Here we can feel free and safe, with you, particularly between you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I arrived, with the airplane and the, the driver of the ambassador was a gentleman from the, someone from uh, Guatemala. Ten minutes he wanted to arrange the luggage in the back of the car. Ten minutes. And the door didn't close. Well explain it. Do it the opposite. So indeed, pick for Kurt. So I didn't want more, no more, punk for Kurt. And then the, the president of the Jewish community said, Rabbi, you have to understand, they have a limit. They don't understand. We have to do it to ourselves. So I did it myself in one second. What, is, what, what happened here? To arrange, to put the luggage in the back of the, of the car. And sometimes I understand why Baruch Hashem HaKadosh gave us a special brain. Therefore we need to roll so many places in the world around the leaders are always Jews. Sometimes it's good, sometimes the opposite. <laughs> but it's a fact. I was surprised that the uh, to a, that I was invited by Putin when he was a president a, in the Russia. Still today, he is a leader. But uh, there, officially, he was a president. And he invited <coughs> 25 religious leaders around the same table. He sat with us all the day. When he prepared the church, so he set one chair on the left side of him, in the right side of him, set the, the uh, patriarch of the Russian church, very important man. He uh, died uh, one and a half years ago, he was an old man. And then, in the left side of Putin, set uh, the imam. Russia. Next, the Imam, the second chair, from Putin, he put the chief rabbi of Israel. 
before all the others. You know how many Hindus are in the world? <laughs> One billion and a quarter Hindus and Buddhism, Buddhists, one billion and a half. But the second chair after Putin, the Jew. <laughs> so uh, I asked, uh, I saw between the people there, I asked uh, one of the uh, arranged from, the, from the, the office of the president, tell me, what the sex schedule? I need to speak, I know that you ask me to speak. But when I have to speak, he said, first day uh, that Mr. Putin will open, the patriarch will speak the first, and second, you. I will speak the second one. I saw between the people there one of the heads of uh, uh, the Hayatullahs from Iran. I asked him, Excuse me, when he will speak? <laughs> so he said, he said, number four or number five? Can I change the plan? I asked him, why do you want to change? Because I want to hear him and to answer him immediately. <laughs> so uh, I he said, I, I, the decision not belong to me, I have to ask. Of course, it's Russia. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, 20 minutes later, I was during the reception, with the permission, you, you can speak number four or number five, he will speak instead of you. And he will speak one before you. Good. Put it open, and then the patriarch spoke, and uh, then we arrived to the speech of this uh, Hayatullah and he spoke nothing Sufi sweet like sugar like honey Allah Rahman he opened the heart of the Lord he is speaking about our and uh, and he said we have to give respect to every human being and no difference in religion and we have to give honor and this and this. So every rabbi could be able to say the Droshe that our Kodesh is behind him. When he finished his uh, wonderful Droshe, I asked him, I think that you had a mistake. The address for your speech is not you. Because you spoke so nice about honor, <coughs> respect. Go say to Bin Laden. Why he kill innocent people? He gives respect to people? He wanted all around this table will be Muslims. <coughs> about what you are speaking. And I began to give him box after box. <laughs> and I took out the picture of Gilad Shalit. And I asked him what he did to you. An innocent soldier didn't shoot, it was not a war, you kidnapped him without reason, you didn't give him even, ask, even a piece of information if he's still alive, if he's healthy. I asked so many imams and sheikhs, please give me the opportunity, cover my eyes. I am not a diplomat and I am not a politician. I am a religious leader like you. Bring me to his place. Give me the opportunity to say to him with him one sentence. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. They refused. And you speak about honor and you speak about respect, so nice. And then, when I was excited to speak, all the television, the, the camera, it was about the picture of the, uh, the Gilad Shalit, it was the, the main issue of his conference later. Uh, so I, I heard that the patriarch 
said something to Mr. Putin. He said, in him, the right side, I didn't understand the word because he spoke Russian. Someone explained, first of all, all the people heard what he spoke because he forgot to close the microphone. <laughs> so he, spoke, he asked him how to behave with this rabbi. In one side, I opened uh, some good things about Russia and uh, because at the same time uh, two uh, diplomats uh, were killed in Iraq. And I said to them that I, I understand your situation. We are a nation that we suffer so uh, many years and we understand it. And uh, I said to him, Divrei Nechome. And then on the other side I spoke against their partner. Iran, they are close to them. So he didn't have, know how to behave, to say something against me or uh, positively. So, in our language, Putin said to him, you can't say Shkoyach. <laughs> Stay tuned. Tape with Rabbi Doug. We'll be right back. I am Moshe Feiglin, Manhigut Yehudit, from the Jewish Leadership Movement, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. You have to be proud, and one of the reasons Rabbi Spots, he is guilty, <laughs> that he know how to connect all the kinds of the Jews, Haredim and Zionim, together. We are Jews. If you will see your hands, every finger is very weak, very big. One finger is nothing, but if you close your hand, it's strong. You are a strong community only because you are united. Keep it. You can be proud. Teach it to the next generation. And I wish you a lot of success. And I believe it's really been a great honor to have Rabbi Yonah Metzger, the Ashkenazic Chief Rabbi of Israel, the Rav Harashi, to be here in Chicago with us and to be in our show. I had the great privilege of sitting next to him on Shabbat at the davening in the afternoon and uh, he was most gracious. We chatted for a long while and uh, he agreed that I could have Rishus to uh, tape his speech today and have him on. He's been very, very kind and he is a wonderful, brilliant person. Uh, I want to thank all of you for being with us. Remember, you can check out our website www.tvrabbi.com where you can also see our shows on the web. and. If you want to send me some email, info at tvrabbi.com is the address. Hope to see you next time right here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Shalom, everyone. This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.